President Bola Tirbutu attends slain Delta soldiers' burial on Wednesday. Central Bank of Nigeria raises interest rate to 24.75%. Kidnapped in OPDP chairman Azeg Mimi regains freedom. Let's check out headlines from outside Nigeria. A president reduced to figurehead as Togo adopts new constitution. South Africa's election court rejects ANC bid to deregister Zuma's MK party. Well, let's look at uh, many tonight right here on Politics HQ with a seven-member judicial panel set up to investigate allegations against him. Philip Shaibu's days as deputy governor of Edo State may well be numbered. We'll look at the latest twist in the political saga between the governor of Edo State, Obasaki, and his deputy. My name is Kofi Bartels, you're watching Politics HQ. You're welcome. Edo State Chief Judge Daniel Okungboa has uh, set up a seven-member panel uh, to investigate the allegations of gross misconduct leveled against the Deputy Governor of the State, Philippe Shaibu. Well, I should have added, maybe I should have added in battle to his name. The Edo State House of Assembly, if you remember, had passed a resolution asking the Chief Judge to set up the uh, or the chief judge has to set up the panel or the committee to, you know, probe the allegations against Mr. Shaibu. The Assembly Speaker Blessing Agbe Baku during the plenary had notified the lawmakers that the seven-day ultimatum given to Mr. Philip Shaibu to respond as allowed by law to the impeachment notice served on him had expired. The man did not respond. The man didn't show up. Well, today... Uh, a statement by the Chief Registrar of the Edo State High Court containing the names of members of the panel showed that two names were missing from the original list. That is, those two names were in the original list but were not on or in the statement announced or released today by the, uh, uh, the Edo State High Court. Some reports are claiming that the two individuals whose names are missing, both professors, uh, declined serving on the panel. So maybe lawyers could say they recuse themselves. What is going on in the state? Where will this lead uh, to? Where will this end up? Will Philip Shaibu be impeached? Our guests tonight, a crack panel to do justice to this topic, uh, eminently qualified. We have two lawyers, Mande Obani, who is the chairman of the Nigeria Bar Association section on public interest and development law. He joins us via video link in Lagos. And we have Dennis Osariti, another legal practitioner who joins us from Edo State, also via video link. Esquires, good evening to you, gentlemen, and thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. Well, we, we, we call you... Good evening. Thanks for having me. Yes, we call you leaded, leaded uh, men or gentlemen, so we hope to tap from your knowledge uh, uh, tonight on this very sensitive and important issue. I want to start with you. Um, uh, Mr. Mario Bani, please tell us what you know uh, about the petition on which Shaibo's impeachment is uh, proceeding, or impeachment proceeding is rather is founded on. We hear that um, the grounds are that of perjury and uh, the disclosure of government secrets. What, what do you know about this, sir? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for having me once again. And I also extend my greetings to uh, my colleague that is in the studio. Uh, or as part of the uh, crack team. Now, I know as a fact that issue of impeachment of deputy governors as a, uh, and even governor in Oscar today, uh, they always have uh, alleg any allegation uh, that will make the chief judge to set up a team to investigate, after which uh, it becomes a foregone call that that person will be impeached. But most times, in a hurry to carry out the impeachment process, which is removal of office. And they, that we, once you are removed, the next thing you will do is to go to court. And by the time the matter is determined, the government, the tenure of that government would have ended, you know, and then that is the end of the matter, even if they ask you to be reinstated. That is the position. So what is going on now is that uh, Shuabu will be impeached. There's no two way about it. As to whether they will comply with the procedure that the Constitution itself has laid down, it's going to be a different thing entirely that the court will interpret. I'm not going to prejudice whatever the court will reach as a decision, but the point is that Shabu will be gone. The moment you are ticked for impeachment and you see a very willing house, 
that is ready to impeach you. That's the end of it. They will get the chief judge to set up a panel. The panel will turn in the conclusion that you are you have committed all those misconduct, all those grounds that they have alleged. And then the next thing is that the impeachment process will be a concluded fact. And then you'll be removed from office. And then all the all the things they enjoy as the deputy governor will be taken away from you, become ordinary citizen. Then you go to court. After you win at the lower court, you they will go on appeal. From appeal, it goes to Supreme Court. You know, average of 10 years, the government would have uh, ended. And then you now restore to power as the deputy governor. By that time, it becomes meaningless because uh, uh, the, the tenure is academic exercise, you know. So that is what is going to happen. You don't quarrel with those the, with the government. You don't quarrel with the state house of assembly. The moment you have misunderstanding and they come up with any you know, trump, any charge, any trump up charge, you are gonna, you are gonna. That is actually what is going to happen. So it's unfortunate that Shwabi that had a very robust and very very powerful relationship with uh, uh, with the uh, governor Abaseki. Now turn out that both of them are not best of pals, and he has come to the level now of impeachment, which they always use to remove their deputies. You know? so it's, it's, it's going to be a, a foregone conclusion. So within a few days now, we hear that uh, Shuabi has been taken out as the deputy governor, and the next year is going to go into court. You no, know? but that matter will last more than more than average of ten years. By that time, uh, Obaseki would have finished his tenure and gone. Wow, um, you've answered a lot of uh, some of the questions I had for you. Uh, let's go over to. Um, Mr. Dennis Osareti in Edo State. Um, do you agree that um, it's a fair accompli for Philip Shabu? He will be impeached. Yeah, well, I, want, I, don't, I wouldn't want to preempt the outcome of the panel, you know, that has been set up to investigate the allegations against the, the deputy governor who currently occupies the office in Edo State. You know, I, I don't see that the fair are complete. I still believe that uh, in line with the constitution, the House of Assembly had um, re requested that the, the chief judge of the state to set up a panel, and the panel, to the best of my knowledge, has been set up, and the panel would, you know, is yet to commence um, hearing or sitting or commence investigation. The deputy governor still has a chance to, you know, present his own side of the story, and if they find it convincing enough, that may be it, you know, so I wouldn't want to, you know, like my little friend or my little senior on the other side seems to, uh, you know, paint a very gloomy picture. I wouldn't want to paint it as a gloomy picture. Rather, I believe that uh, whatever is happening right now is in line with the constitution. And that's going to be given a fair chance to come and take some side of the case. So if I were him, I would take every opportunity that the law has availed me, you know, to air his own side of the story so that the public can be in a better position to determine what exactly is going on. All right, Dennis Osarity, um, are you aware of the petitions uh, upon which this impeachment is, uh, is, uh, is based or founded? Um, we hear, of course, um, the grounds for the um, impeachment being perjury and disclosure of government secrets. Are you aware of, of, of the details of that petition? Which government secrets did he uh, disclose so in the what did he do that amounted to perjury? Yeah, so, so for, for, yeah, for, judging from what we have already in the public domain, the majority leader of the House of Assembly has come out clearly to state the grounds upon which the petition was uh, founded. You know, and one uh, chief of which, like you have rightly pointed out, was the fact that the deputy governor is accused of having breached the oath of secrecy. You know, that he subscribed to at the point, you know, he was being sworn in as deputy governor. All right. You know, but the details we are yet to be, you know, be furnished. You know, that's that is one of the reasons, so one of the duties or one of the responsibility of the committee. The committee, when they start sitting, they will not be able to unravel what exactly the nitty gritty, you know, are. Whereas well, today, we know that he's been accused of perjury. He's been accused of, uh, you know, disclosing official secrets, and we must allow the committee that has been set up in accordance with the law to do its work. So that at the end of the findings, we will not be in a position to really know what exactly he's been accused of. But right. like today, yeah. what you have stated is what we also know. Okay. All right. Um, it's, it's, it's quite interesting that we do not know exactly what the co content of that petition 
or the contents are, I would have thought this should yes. be public knowledge by now. You know, available even no, online, no, no. maybe on the house. It can be. Things. It can be public. It can be public knowledge because that's the allegations were specific and they were addressed to the person of the deputy governor. So the onus is now it's not lie on its own shoulders to come out and tell us exactly you know what its responses are. So the committee is the only constitutionally recognized uh, you know body that will now investigate and come out with the facts All right. as it is. But okay. today we really don't know the details of those allegations. All right. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mondo Bani, um, sir, why in your view, you know, did uh, Mr. Shabano utilize the seven-day window given to him to respond to the impeachment notice by um, the House of Assembly? Uh, the point is that what, what is really the accusation against him? Who doesn't know that uh, the problem that Shabano has with uh, Obaseki, uh, His Excellency, was uh, his uh, audacity to run for the office, office of the governor without uh, concurrence, you know, from his uh, boss. It was not that when the primary, sorry, when the primary took place. Hello, are you there? Yes, we're Hello, here. sir. Am I being here? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry about that. When, 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 when yes. the primary took place, he came out with a different result saying that he was the, he was the winner. And I'm sure he's still pursuing the matter in court. You know that that actually is what is leading to all this. Now let's let's get this man out of the out of this. And when you are impeached, when you are convicted and all that, means you cannot in any way, you know, run for that office anymore and all that. So that is actually what is playing out. We, my learned colleague, is being optimistic and he's uh, he's not trying to. He's saying that oh, we wait until the entire process is. This man is already gone, as a deputy governor. He's going to go to court. No matter the explanation he gives, no matter the window that is given to him, no matter what he wants to say, it's like a chicken, uh, or, or yes, is he a chicken now, or corn appearing before chicken in a judgment. The judgment or cockroach, cockroach before a chicken. And it's chicken that is presiding over a matter that cockroach is a, is a, is a, is a defendant. The matter is already concluded. You know, if no matter the explanation that the Putin governor is going to give concerning the allegation that they have leveled against him, I can assure you that they will turn in a verdict of guilty. And the next thing that is going to be impeached, but he's going to have a recourse to the judicial uh, intervention. Whether he will succeed in that uh, judicial intervention is a different ballgame entirely. But the point is that he is gone. That is the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. Don't allow any time for a governor that you is your boss to be in commence impeachment proceeding. He owns the state house. They are the one controlling the state house in Nigeria. We all know that. So the man is gonna. He go, just go, by, by in two weeks' time, you will hear, you will come back here in your television and call, ask me well, what I predicted is true. He's gone. He's gone. That is unfortunate. You know, don't allow yourself to run into conflict with your boss as a governor. The moment you do that, he comes up with any allegation. And the law itself does not define what grave, uh, grave uh, misconduct is all about. It's not defined in the constitution. Whatever they say is grave misconduct, is grave misconduct. You can take the governor's girlfriend and he calls it a grave and it comes up with a as part of grants for impeachment, and you are gone. That is what the constitution says. It is grave misconduct, which is not defined. Oh. And so they have all leveled out those accusations against him. And they have called it grave misconduct. And for which explanation they will not accept because he has, you know, stepped on toes. And stepping on toes means he contested without the stakeholders agreeing with him. And he came out again to declare himself winner. And has gone to court to pursue his legal right. What more? So they consider that up front. So they come up with this impeachment. That's that has always been the game. We have oh. we know we, we've been in this system now. We know how this game is being played. So the man will be impeached, no, about no doubt, but he will go to court. All right. Um uh interesting. Um Dennis Sarity, we hear that uh, two members of the panel are set up to investigate these allegations against Shaibu. Um the yes. names were not included in the updated list that was released by the Registrar of the High Court of Edo State. And um, some yeah. reports are saying that the two individuals, professors, uh, declined yes. the membership or nomination yes. to this uh, panel. That's how, correct. What, what's That's your correct. view on this? And how do you think this will affect the case going forward? You think that the other members may also may see more people, you know, pulling out? Any person that I've well, pulled out it, now is like, you know, the, the, the point is that those two professors, I understand, do not want to be part of the, of the Jimmy. They don't want to be part of the charade, so they, they pulled out because maybe they have integrity. Others already put in their decision and all that. 
and at the end they will they will they will, uh, they will turn, it, turn in a verdict of guilt guilty I'm, I'm just telling you those two professors felt that look i can't be used yeah, no if I may. because they will tell you if i may come in okay so, sorry about that the in. question was addressed to dennis uh, sorry about that dennis yeah it's okay, sorry about it. it's okay. yeah yes if, if i may come in yeah so it, it, what we are seeing in the social media is anything to go by yeah maybe yeah it can be correct to say that um, two members of the initial members of the panel you know declined the appointment but we are we are also reading just this evening that um those two persons have also been replaced you know by two other eminently qualified lawyers you know that we know very well of a very great reputation very high integrity they've also been appointed and we are not aware if those new persons have also declined their appointment so to that extent, I could say that the panel right now is properly constituted and the panel it, you know, has a singular responsibility under law to unravel the mystery, to investigate the allegations that are leveled against the city governor. And they have a period of uh, not, 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 not less than three months you know, to turn out uh, you know, their, their, their findings. And it's on the basis of that findings that the House of Assembly will now commence, you know, maybe the impeachment proceedings or otherwise, you know, but just to an extent, I also like to disagree with my learned friend on the other side to say that uh, the high court, the chief judge or the judiciary is an independent arm of government. So we cannot now say I begin to predetermine or make, you know, like uh, look through the crystal ball and just, you know, begin to uh, make comments that appear to be conclusive. The, 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 the judiciary is, a, is an independent arm of government, and that is the, 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 the arm that is saddled with the duty and ability of constituting that panel. So when the when judiciary that appears to be an independent arm has set up a panel, that panel is you know, deemed to be apolitical. You know, they are supposed to be neutral, and that panel is to give the deputy governor a fair chance or a fair hearing. So we cannot now sit down and say it's already a completed matter when the panel is yet to turn out a verdict. So we must allow that panel that appears to be coming from an independent arm, it's not in the House of Assembly, it's not from the executive, to carry out its investigation. So whether, whether it becomes a conclusion there, we cannot, now, we cannot uh, come back here and begin to do a post-mortem analysis of what happened. But for now, we must allow the process to run its full course. And I would encourage the Deputy Governor to appear before that panel and state his own side of the story. So for him to now sit down and be need to, you know, undermine an independent arm of government, I don't see that it's a very good uh, behavior or a, a good conduct of somebody who is occupying the executive office of the British government. So it must, as a law, a many citizen, all know, right. all right. say of what the law has, uh, you know, has given to him. Dennis, sorry, to and state th thank you very much. Uh, thank allow... you, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we have to go for a quick break, but when we come back, Monday Bunny, you have a chance to to respond, we, we, we have to go for commercial. For those of you watching at home, please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Politics HQ right here on New Central Television. I'm Kofi Bartel. Still with us, uh, two uh, lawyers, uh, Monday, uh, Mandi Ubani, and of course, uh, we have uh, Dennis Osariti, both legal practitioners, joining us via video link. Before we went on break, uh, Dennis, you were making a point or case um, for the view um, that it is not a foregone conclusion that Deputy Governor Philip Scheibel will be impeached. Um, he, he still has a chance to defend himself, and you disagreed with your learned colleague uh, on the program. Amandu um, Obani, what, what's your, your response to, to, to his, um, his view? Um, I've been, in, I've been a, a, a while. I've been, I've, been, I've been in Nigeria, and I've read Nigerian politics. I've studied it, and I've experienced it. And then we are we are more realistic uh, in our analysis. Uh, if you want to play politics, uh, you have to, especially with your boss. You know, hundred percent loyalty is what is required. The moment your loyalty is ninety or seventy, uh, then you will be in trouble. Especially when you want to go for any political post, it's only very few. I think it's either one percent that any deputy governor has actually mm -hmm. succeeded, you know, uh, who has capacity and then succeeded in, in getting the primary election in his favor and eventually emerge as a gubernatorial candidate. Uh, the same, as I speak to you, except everyone wants to pretend. You know, I know I'm not a pretender. I've always uh, said the way it is. The scene of Shuyabu today and why all these allegations are flying about, you know, 
bringing him now to impeachment proceeding is because he dared to contest election and he didn't have the blessing of his uh, his boss. His boss said, "No, I don't want you. I have another candidate." And he said, "Ah, uh, dear, I'm going. I'm going to contest." And he contested according to them, and even declared himself a winner for doing that. That is clearly, clearly a mortal sin, and and he's going to pay dearly for it. And that is why they have initiated the proceeding. And that is the reality. As I'm talking to you, either in three months' time or in the next week or two weeks' time, you will know what has happened to Shuabu. Shuabu is gone, and that is the truth. He can only get a reprieve in court. As far as he's concerned, no matter the explanation he wants to go and do before the panel, his matter is already forgone, you know, so it's a concluded issue. He's going to be impeached, but he may get any reprieve in court. By the time he gets the reprieve, the government of Abbasiki would have been gone. They know these things, you know, these are practical guys who have played politics over time, and they, and they know how systemic our problem is. So they play it, and they play it, you know, but if you're wise, you're able to decode. Uh, we... In, we are not only a lawyer, I'm also a, pol a political animal. I see what goes on. As I'm telling you, you are a journalist of repute and all that. Come and watch out what will happen to Shuavu in a few weeks' time. Oh. He's gone. He's going to go to court and know whether the court will listen to him after the entire thing has been done. The deed is concluded. It's unfortunate. All right. You know, so let, let, right. That, that's, that's, my, that's my stand here. All right. Dennis De Osariti, um, having listened to uh, Mandy Obani, perhaps we can see that history is on the side of of um, the fate, mm. or the view that the fate mm. of uh, um, Philip mm. Shabo is a foregone conclusion. His days are numbered mm. as deputy governor of uh, Edo State, or as it will be said in uh, the southwest part of Nigeria, Otilo. Yeah. Um, if we go down history lane, <laughs> we have Eze Marumere, deputy yeah. governor of Imo State, who was impeached in 2018. In 2009, we have uh, Gara Bagari, who was impeached as deputy governor of Bauchi State. Uh, uh, Dennis, uh, in 2010, the then Deputy Governor of uh, uh, Bayelsa State, uh, Perimboe Ebebi, if you remember, was impeached. In February, two years ago, in February 2022, you remember the case of Deputy Governor of Zamfara State, uh, Madi Ali Gusau, uh, who refused to decamp to the APC with Governor Bello Matawali. If you remember, he was also impeached by the State House of Assembly for refusing to decamp. Um, in Kogi State, at the time, the Governor Yaya Bello in 2019 um, was not happy with his deputy governor. In fact, the deputy governor then fell out with him. That's uh, Simon Achuba. He was also thrown out. Um, in August 2014, Sande Oyebuchi uh, was impeached as deputy governor of Edo State. Um, all of these deputy governors have one thing in common. The fact that they fell out with their principles and it was so easy for the State House of Assembly to execute their removal from office. Dennis? Yes, yeah, well, well the, the procedure or the term impeachment itself is not a bad thing. It's not new or it's not strange to our political lexicon. You know, it's a, it's a requirement, it's a provision in our laws. You know, it's one of the tools that the House of Assembly have, you know, to act as a check on the executive. In this instance, the, the, the deputy governor is also a part of the executive. So if at any point in time, any member of the executive is found to have um, acted in a manner that is unbecoming, the House of Assembly is constitutionally empowered to, you know, deploy the instrumentality of the law by the, through the vehicle of impeachment to call them to order. So I don't see any reason why anybody should, uh, you know, be thinking that it's a, it's, it's a death sentence. It's not. It's, all, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a provision in our law that, you know, acts as a means of keeping in check the executive. But in this instance, the deputy governor of Edo State is the one that is in the eye of the storm. And in any case, you forgot to mention the instances of, of impeachment that happened in our neighboring state of uh, Ondo State. All right? So if the deputy governor has, you know, so he's not seen to uh, be above the party that brought him to power. He's not seen to be, you know, casting as passion on the party that brought him to power. He's seen to be constantly engaged in the work of wars with his own boss, in his, his own party, his own political family. It's only important, it's only, uh, you know, expedient that the House of Assembly, you know, rise up to the occasion and deploy the instrumentality of uh, impeachment. And that is what exactly is happening here. So let even for once, uh, remove the toga of being a lawyer and then look at it politically. The conduct of the deputy governor in recent times, can we really, in the eye of, you know, uh, writing it for the public, say that the governor, the deputy governor has acted in a manner of a statesman? The answer is no. 
you know, because you have an ambition, is that enough reason why you should now begin to act as a clog to the wheel of progress or attempt to bring down the roof or try to cause political tension and crisis in the state? So these are issues that have been happening over time that a lot of political watchers have also, you know, be very forthright, be very open in calling the government to order. Because if you now begin to feel that you are above your party, you now begin to feel that you are even uh, more, uh, far more important than even the governor of a state. Right. I think it's only expedient okay. that the House of Assembly call him to order, and that is why the instrumentality of the law has made provision for impeachment. So I don't see anything that is uh, untoward or uh, that is politically motivated. So if the deputy governor now begins to feel that it's now uh, a bow where it's bigger than his party, okay. the House of Assembly and the party... Well, well the perhaps, perhaps that's why, Dennis, perhaps that's why... Yeah, perhaps that's why uh, Monday Obani is, is insisting <laughs> that... Um, um, uh, Philip Chabot's case is concluded. He is as good as gone. But uh, let's no, no, look no, at... No, 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 no. For, let's for, me, look at... for me, he has been accused. Of, he has been accused. It's only okay. fair to also give him well, fair hearing. I can hearing. see Mwane Bani shaking his head. I, I don't know if we want to continue <laughs> yes. on this particular um, uh, point. Um, but I, I want us to look at the, the fact that you have... With that sentiment. Yes, yes. I want yes. us to look at the fact that you have an ongoing case, Mwane Bani, uh, instituted by Philip Shabo uh, to halt the impeachment proceedings. Um, uh, originating yes. someone to, well, last Friday served on Governor Godwin Obaseki um, through Korea. Yes. And then also yes. we posted uh, at the gate of the Edo State House of Assembly. We had those, the belief was chased away. I don't know how true that is. And um, Milord, the Honorable Justice, yes. uh, James Omotosho, declined the oral prayer of uh, Shaibu's lawyer to issue an order ex parte um, you know, yes. directing the parties to maintain the status quo, citing the uh, you know non-service of the originating summons on the parties as required by law. Uh, what's your view on this, yes. and how does it affect the process? No, he has gone to court already, uh, but he, he he was unable to secure the interim order uh, to restrain uh, the process that is already ongoing. Uh, that is clearly a major. Uh, a major uh, issue, you know, uh, but the point is that there is already a, an existing case. Uh, when all this materializes, you know, the issue of whether there has been a case in court, you know, uh, will come to play. Now, what the court would do is to ask that they be put on notice. Now, those that he wants to restrain will be put on notice. And of course, they will come up with the idea that this is clearly an internal matter of the status of assembly for which the judiciary cannot interfere. They may come up with that and all that, but the court now will look at the process whether the process they have adopted is clearly in compliance with the strict provisions of the Constitution, because that is where they are always caught. If they don't follow all those procedures that the Constitution itself has laid down, they always are in a bid to carry out this impeachment. They will meet one or two, and that's where they always have an issue. But if they follow, comply with all the laid down procedure for impeachment proceeding of a governor, a deputy governor, there is, there is no way the court can come in in order to stop that process. It's only where they have failed to comply with the strict provisions of the constitution that the court can you know, come in and meddle into the matter. But presently, he has gone to court. We also await what the court decision will be. But the court would like to put them on notice and then make sure that the process is served on them. And that's why the court refused this party interim order that, that, that he was seeking uh, against, against the United State House of Assembly. The court did not grant him such indulgence. But at the end of the day, the court will come up with a decision whether the court, I mean, whether the House of Assembly has followed the procedure that the Constitution has provided, that is where we are. So for now, as I said earlier, I'm very, very unfortunate. They will still go ahead with the process and procedure and get him impeached. And the next thing is it goes right to court. If All the right. court now examine it after 10 years, after 10 years, he may get a reprieve or he may not get any reprieve. That's how that's how we roll in the country. You know, so, now you mentioned all the cases that have happened. You know, yeah. that's how we roll. Okay. Uh, is, so you're saying there's no chance of uh, Milord Honorable Justice uh, um, James Omoto Shaw um, looking at the merits of the impeachment uh, petition to see whether he, you know, he actually did the things that you know, he's accused of doing. No, no, no. The, 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 case, the case is, is it the person that set up the, this or the new case that has been tried? No, the case will be here. No, what, what, what the court refused was interim order they were asking mm. for, ex parte mm. order. The process is still on. He has already filed an action against the State of Assembly. So eventually that will be that will be the proceeding will take place when he get them served. And then they will now sit down and then begin to look at whether the process has followed the compliance. So this is strictly on the process, process, not on the content of the 
petition. No, 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 it's history on the process. You, okay. can, you, can't stop, okay. you can't stop a status of assembly from carrying out the responsibility of impeachment. The court has no jurisdiction. It's only when the process is not complied with that the court can come in and say, yeah, you omitted this one, you didn't do this one and all that. But as for the process, the court has no jurisdiction over impeachment proceeding by the status of assembly. Mm. Uh, Dennis, you foresee, and please, uh, uh, Manu, can you tilt your camera slightly down so we can see you better? Okay. Dennis, do you foresee um, uh, the, the, the court um, and the judge, Lord Rumble, I'm not asking you to preempt the decision of uh, the judiciary, but looking at the matters at play, do you foresee um, this ex parte, uh, or, sorry, this uh, injunction um, or this order to maintain the status quo um, at a time the uh, the suit was filed. Do you foresee uh, it being given? And how do you see this affecting generally yeah. the case? Uh, uh, sadly, sadly, I think uh, the deputy governor at this instance is trying to ask for the impossible, you know, because Section 188 is very clear that no courts can interfere in these proceedings, you know, like my other friend has rightly mentioned, it's a matter of jurisdiction. The High Court or the Federal High Court cannot prevent the House of Assembly from carrying out a constitutional duty. Impeachment, like I've, like I've rightly mentioned, it's a constitutional duty. It's a constitutional power, you know, available to the, to the House of Assembly. And the constitution is said, it's also very explicit, that no court can prevent it from happening. You know, so the Deputy Governor, like I'm saying, it, it, it's only for him shopping. He's just trying to try his luck. He's just trying to gamble. But, 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 but Dennis, what, what if, Dennis, what if there me, is... On That's why I'm encouraging yeah. him. I'm encouraging yeah. him to really say Dennis, you, 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 you're being political, but, but I want us to get back to the law. I know you're a member of the PDP. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. But um, what if what if the court says, okay, on, on April 15, when the adjourn date, says, okay, we're going to adjourn this further, you know, because of one or two things, and then they uh, make an order saying that the parties must maintain the status quo as at the time the suit was filed. Don't wouldn't this affect the impeachment proceeding? Probably blow it up to the at time Obasaki leaves office and the new House of Assembly comes on board. <laughs> By that time they're tired. I just See? I just I just told you that in any case the ex parte motion that you have rightly you know uh, mentioned was you know was denied you know because the court ordered that they should you know put the other party on notice. And I'm not aware that they have been able to affect service of those processes. No, as no, they, they have affected service. You know? They have, they have. Let's they have. No, I, I said I'm not aware. I'm not no, aware I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making you aware. Service. I'm making you it's aware matter, now. No, it's a, no, 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 no. It's a matter of fact. It's, no, it's, no, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm the journalist. I'm the journalist. No, and I'm, I'm telling you we, that the parties have been served. Governor Baski was served via Korea. Via Korea. You are not a member. You are not a member of the judiciary. No, no, I'm giving you the facts. That is, no, you're a member of the course, PDP, the you're an interested party in this. I, I, no, can no, no, I, no, no, can no, you allow me to speak, please? Dennis, I'm in giving a, you the facts. Dennis, Dennis, please, no, no, please. No, no. please. I, 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 if, I if I may, if I may, I crave your indulgence, if I may, if I may, if I may. The, the Governor Baski has been served via courier. And the bailiff has also pasted, um, you know about substituted service, has pasted the, 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 the summons, summons on the gate, the entrance of the House of Assembly, the bailiff himself. Yeah, Dennis, I can't hear you. Expected. Yeah, the bailiff will have to inform court that they have effected service. Until that is done, what you are saying now is merely speculative. Are you, so are you in touch with the bailiff? The that they have effected. And I'm not telling you that, that we can only know that fact at the next adjourned date in open court. So it's, it's only when the belief are reported back to court in open court that they have effective service that we cannot begin to make some of these allusions that you are making. As of today, I'm not aware that they have effective service. And let's even assume without consider that they have effective service. The point is, does the court have jurisdiction to prevent the House of Assembly from carrying out its function? The answer is no. And so far, in my own estimation, the House of Assembly, being an independent arm of government, they have complied with what the law expects them to do. And it's only only natural, it's only logical for this for the for Philip Shaibu to appear, make himself available to the committee, carry out that investigation, state the other of the story, so that the, uh, the, the the panel can you know be in the position All to right. make a you know a, 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 an objective finding. Okay. So that the House of Assembly All right. in the people's house and also you. be able to make that conclusion. Until then, we cannot preempt 
Well, Dennis, have thank you. Yeah, uh, so Mando Bani, this is, this is a, a very uh, interesting case that we probably have seen, <laughs> you know, time and time and time again. And politics mm. mixing with um, legal issues and all that. But please, please mm. hold the thought because I want to take your view on what uh, we just uh, asked Dennis. <laughs> we'll return mm. after uh, a break. When we come back, we'll take your thoughts, Mando Bani. For those of you watching at home, please uh, stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's uh, continue our heated political or legal discourse um, with our two guests who are still with us in the studio on Fire Radar on the program who are joining us via video link. We have Dennis Osariti who is in uh, Doe State and we have uh, Mario Bani, both uh, uh, eminently uh, qualified legal practitioners. Uh, he's in legal state as well. Um, gentlemen, before we end the break, uh, Mario Bani, your thoughts on, on the question I asked Dennis and even his response. Yes. Um, is, there, is there a possibility, yes. a possibility that this may draw out in favor, uh, this case may linger in favor of um, a Shaibo? No, you know, uh, as, as Riley pointed out, the, the press, press is very interested in this case. So they are reporting all the things that are happening with regards to this case, including the issue of service, you know, of, of the process. According to you, the governor himself has been served and the national, I mean, the state of the assembly also has been served by some state means, you know, by pesting. And so that means that if service now is proved, then the next hearing, uh, then they may have to file their counter to whatever originating process that uh, this man has commenced action with. And when they do that, the court will want to hear the, that, that application, whether they should grant an injunction restraining them uh, from carrying out their constitutional duty. Uh, they have to decide all that. If the court finds out there is something they have done that is not in accordance with the law, it's, that's the only ground upon which the constitution, I mean, the law allows the court to come in. It's any anything that has to do with impeachment is clearly exclusive uh, right of the of the state or national assembly. Now, unless they come, they don't comply with the provision of the constitution. If they do, no problem. If they don't, then the court come in in order to rectify whatever uh, the error they have committed. So that that is the process. So by whatever next adjourned date, the court will now you know receive report of proof of service, and probably go ahead to hear the the application that day. And then reserve judgment, you know, or reserve ruling or whatever the situation is. That's where we are. We cannot be able to preempt whether it will be in favor or against, you know, it, that, that would be preemptive. You know, you know no, I was asking if there's a possibility, a possibility um, that uh, if, you know, that, that, several guests. You're asking me for a prediction. You're still asking me for a prediction. No, no, I'm, I'm asking saying, you to paint <laughs> the different scenarios for us. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. It may be in his favor or it may be against him, but I can only say that the court will only come in. When there is any violation of the procedure, lay down procedure, the constitutional provision as to impeachment proceeding, mm. that's the only way the court can come in. But in absence of that, the court do not in any way uh, interfere with the process that is going on by the state House of assembly. They can only come in if the process is not complied with. And I can't say now whether they have complied with the process. The lawyers who have been paid will be in a position to do all that. <laughs> do all that, you know. Yeah. Like but, Mr. But, but, Mr. But, but, Mr. My friend. My friend Dennis, Dennis is one of the lawyers, so I'm sure he's paid. He's paid highly. That's why you can see his position. If Dennis will tell you there was no proof of service, you know, and all that. Yeah, but but Mando, buddy, yeah. uh, uh, they those state the governorship elections are just um, uh, a mm -hmm. few months away in September. So we're in March, April, May, June, July, August, six months away, and um, yes. there's a possibility that the All Progressives Congress or Labour Party could win the governorship election. That you know the ABC yes. or even LP could have majority. Um, of the members yes. of the House, so even produce the next speaker. Who knows? These are all possibilities. Yes. Um, That's right. Is there a possibility yes. that Shaibu could use this instrument of injunction? I don't know if it's interlocutory or otherwise. Um, is there a possibility yes. to use this instrument as a uh, uh, as a tool to stall the case, or the case could drag on? Let me say rather in his favor until the expiration of um, uh, the administration of Obasaki. After which, no court in, will do that. a new government may look at him with pity. No, 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 no court will do that. The court will like to have the matter disposed because the new election is taking place in uh, in September, as you rightly pointed out. So the, that is the reason why this matter is in court presently. So the court will not want to drag the matter. They will want to end up the case so that at least we know their rights uh, and liabilities, you know. So I, I don't think it will drag on. No court will want to do that because they are also very conscious of the fact that Somebody has gone to court because the election is taking place very soon. So whatever decision they want to do, it will be done expeditiously in order to give every person the right
to go and contest the election. If you win, fine and all that. But but Shreibu, you know, say he won the primary. I think that there's already a court case in that regard. Um, while while the the candidate of uh, Obaseki said that he is the candidate that actually emerged, but the party is against Shreibu. That is the problem. The party is against Shreibu. The pre the governor is against Shreibu. So I don't know how Shreibu would have liked, loved to remain in the political party where he is not wanted. He would have probably seek uh, seek a refuge elsewhere. But he preferred to remain in PDP. And I don't know how he was expecting PDP to give him ticket when the party was not with him, when the governor was not with him. So we find out how, how that plays out. The most important is loyalty, sir. If you are not loyal 100%, you don't need to problem in Nigerian politics. It's if I 120%, they don't even demand 100. It's 120. If you are not loyal 120, forget it. You cannot be able to work as a, as a deputy. You can't be able to work as an assistant. You can't be able to work as an appointee. If you are, unless you are the one in charge. If you are not in charge, you must, you must show loyalty. And if you don't show loyalty, you're in trouble in Nigerian politics. Quite interesting. Uh, uh, Dennis Sosarity, um, some people yeah. have pointed to the Edo State, um, sorry, Ondo State example, um, where um, the, the judges acted in a similar situation during their attempts to impeach Lokia Edatiwa, um, particularly the CRPP, um, which I, I know you're very familiar with, Conference of Registered Political Parties in Edo State, uh, yeah. uh, look, your reaction says it all. Um, they are saying that the Edo State Chief just, Judge should borrow a, a leaf or a page from uh, the judges in Edo State, in Ondo State, your neighboring state. Two of them in particular um, are said to have refused to be um, influenced by the executive and the legislature and stood their ground, you know, is what they say. Well, what do you think about that? Well, you're, if you try to compare the on those scenario and Edo scenario, it will be that you are trying to compare apples and oranges. You know, the facts are distinguishable, right? You know, like that of Ondo, where the House of Assembly or the Speaker of the House of Assembly in Ondo State appeared to be the one driving the process because the governor was uh, incapacitated at a point, point in time. But in this instance, the House of Assembly has voted overwhelmingly, passed a resolution directing the Chief Judge to carry out a constitutional duty. I keep emphasizing it. Impeachment is a constitutional duty. It's not subject to the whims and caprices of the members of the House of Assembly. In this instance, the majority of the, House, of the members of the House of Assembly, across party lines, they voted overwhelmingly for that motion, directing the chief judge. So it, it would have been full hardy for the chief judge of the state to have done otherwise. You know, so the chief judge, in, 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 his, in his own wisdom, have looked at the law, you know, you know holistically and objectively, being an, uh, it, 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 it's an independent arm of government that they've looked at it objectively and he has, you know, in its wisdom, you know, concluded that this is the right thing to do. And that has not led to the setting up of the panel. So I don't see why anybody or uh, a busy right. um, medicine interloper like the CRPP right. should not be questioning the rationale of how a chief judge to excite this question. Okay. So is... oh, no, and no, it's like apple and all like this, and it cannot be compared at all. All right. Uh, well, they both have the last uh, letters of their names the same, but I want to go back to Manu. But Manu, buddy, <laughs> how do you think the judiciary, as uh, the judiciary's action or conduct in Ondo State you know, compares to what's happening in, in Edo State. Some are saying, you know, they should borrow a leaf. Uh, but you know that judiciary is also man by human being. You know, you and I, we're different. Mm. You may look at it and you feel maybe they, 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 you are not satisfied with the, uh, with the uh, instruction that is being given to you to do this, you know. Some other person will see it differently and look and say, look, I, I, I agree that this is a job I have to perform, I'll go ahead and do it. So we are all, we are all made of different, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are make, our makeup is different. You know, the way you think is not the way I think. The way you reason may not be the way I reason. So the Ondo man may be different from the man that is manning uh, uh, a do, I mean a do uh, uh, judiciary. So he thinks that there is nothing wrong in doing what he's The Ondo man felt, look, I won't do it and all that. So it's all about individual make. Uh, if we are made up, we are wired differently. And we also reason differently and all that. All of us can reason our same, you know, and all that. So that's what I want to look at it. That the man in Nondo took a different decision does not mean that the man in Edo will take the same decision. The man may see it differently. You know, perception is uh, is key uh, mm -hmm. in this game. All right. Gentlemen, I want to uh, leave it at this point and uh, we'll wrap up. I want to thank both of you for your time. It's quite an, it's been quite an interesting, at uh, times explosive uh, conversation, but I think we both, you both edit on uh, a good note, which is both seeing 
things from the same point of view on my last question. Uh, Mandy Obani, chairman of the Nigeria Bar Association, a section on former, public former interest. Chairman. Former. Former, former chairman, chairman, sorry, no of the Nigeria Bar Association. Maybe, maybe it's a prophecy. Maybe you're about to be appointed again. Who knows? But former chairman of the Nigeria Bar Association section. President of the Bar, yes. <laughs> <laughs> public interest in development law. Uh, you join us from Lagos. Thank and of course, Dennis Osari, a legal practitioner uh, in Edo State, whom we've just learned is on the legal team, one of the parties involved. He didn't deny it, Dennis, so we take that as a yes. <laughs> Thank not, you very I'm much. Not, I'm not on Thank you very team, much. Please. Thank I'm you very much for your time. That's the size of our package tonight on Politics HQ. Return tomorrow with the latest and hottest conversations on the issues in Nigerian politics. My name is Kofi Bartels. Good night.